Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. So Unity's most wanted feature for the longest time is now finally here with Unity 6. This is something that people have been asking since forever. Alongside it, Unity 6 also has some really awesome additions. There's a bunch of graphics features that are super easy to enable and make your game look gorgeous and super performant. We've got the GPU resin drawer, GPU occlusion culling, and spatial and temporal post-processing. These all have some really great benefits, and they're super easy to use. Basically just follow one checkbox and it's all done. It literally tracks the frame rate from around 70 FPS to over 300 FPS. Again, all just by toggling a single option, there's no need to do anything else. So over here, let's look at these ones. Starting with the big one, which honestly, even though this is something that a lot of very vocal people have wanted for a long time, despite that, it has never really been an issue. People thought it was something that made them less likely to find success, but in reality, that's really just a myth. There are examples of games with it that found tons of success. So what I'm talking about here is the Unity Free splash screen. As of Unity 6, it is now completely optional. Previously, if you use the Unity version, the free version, if you did, then the splash screen was mandatory, whereas now you can remove it even on the free version. You can just go into Edit, go down to Project Settings, then over here on the Player tab and on the Splash Image, over here, even on the free version, you can now either enable or disable the splash screen. So that's it, and now if you make a build, it jumps straight into the first scene. Like I said, this is something that a lot of people have wanted for a long time, even though it was really a non-issue. For example, the game Battlebit Remastered, that was a huge hit, and it does have the splash screen, it definitely did not hurt it. The reason why it's never been an issue is because, well, first of all, most players actually don't know what is Unity or what even is a game engine. Most players really just want to play games, that's it. So the theory that players would leave a negative review based on the engine you use is actually a non-issue for 99% of players. And the second reason why that never matter is that the players never actually see that, they only see the splash screen after they actually buy the game, so not before. So the theory that it caused players to not buy Unity games, that can't really be right because you cannot see the splash screen until after they actually buy the game. But anyways, more options are always a good thing. So even though this never really mattered, it is still a nice positive change. You just go into project settings and now you can enable or disable even on the free version. Now the other Unity 6 features, these are actually really important and actually provide great benefits. All of these are super simple to use, basically just one checkbox. And they make your game run much faster and quite beautifully. Starting off with the GPU resin drawer, this one provides some truly insane results. It basically allows game objects to be rendered using GPU instancing. So that is going to reduce the number of draw calls by quite a lot, which frees some CPU processing time. So here I have a nice scene. It is the Synthi Fantasy Kingdom pack. So pretty much exactly the same one that Unity themselves used to showcase this feature. This is a scene that has a mountain of objects. There is a truly insane amount of all kinds of objects. There's props, there's trees, there's buildings, really all kinds of stuff in this scene, very complex. This one is also very much a demo scene. This has not been optimized at all. It just has thousands of objects littered all over the place. If I go ahead and play this scene, if there it is, so by default it is running around 60 to 70 FPS. Now let's enable the GPU resin drawer. So for that, we just need to set up some options. First, let's go into edit and then down into project settings. Then let's go on the graphics tab. And on this one over here for the batch render group variants, for this one, you need to select Keep All. Yep, like that. Then let's go into our Render Pipeline Asset, so our URP Asset. And over here on the Inspector, we need to enable over here the SRP Batcher. And then we have the GPU Resin Drawer, so over here we can swap this into Instance Drawing. And there's one last thing, as it says here on this warning. So we need to go into this render over here, so let's select this one. And over here for the rendering path, we need to swap from forward into forward plus. And yep, that's really it. No need to modify our scene, our assets, anything at all, just like this. Let's play and test. And you right away and look at those results. Again, the exact same scene, the exact same assets, exact same settings on post-processing and everything. All of that is exactly the same, but just by toggling this one option, all of a sudden we went from 70 FPS to over 200 FPS. That is really awesome. We literally got a some like 5x performance boost by just toggling a single option, nothing else. This is really awesome, especially for people like me. Personally, I'm a programmer, I am not a graphics expert. So being able to just work on my game as usual, but then toggling this one option, all of a sudden everything renders five times faster. That is a really awesome bonus. So the GPU resin drawer is excellent. And then the next great feature in Unity 6 is GPU occlusion culling. This one basically means that Unity uses the GPU instead of the CPU in order to exclude objects from rendering when they're occluded behind other objects. Basically, it uses the depth textures in order to figure out what exactly is occluded. In order to enable it, this one is also super simple. We just need to be using the GPU resin drawer like we are using right now. The another thing is also we need to make sure we are in render graph mode. So let's go into edit, then into project settings. And then over here on graphics, we need to scroll down and down here on compatibility mode. We need to make sure this one is not ticked. Okay, like this. And now we just have this checkbox over here on the render pipeline asset, GPU occlusion calling. Just enable this and that's it. Now, just like this, we do have GPU occlusion calling enabled. We can actually verify that there's a really cool visualization. So we can go up here into window, then go down into analysis. And over here, let's open up the rendering debugger. So if there you go, there's this nice little window. 
and over here we can go in the GPU resin drawer, and there we can enable the occlusion test overlay. And if now we see all these boxes, this is basically all the things in which the GPU is realizing that there's some occlusion, there's objects behind those objects. So if I take this and I move the camera around, yep, we can see, yep, look at that, quite a lot of occlusion because we've got a wall in the middle, and just like this, and we can see it is indeed working. Then over here on the stats, we can also see a bunch of things. So we can see we've got 5,900 batches, then about 580k triangles. And if we try to move over there, we can see, yep, those move and those change by quite a bit. However, two things with this one. First of all, I'm pretty sure I have this set up correctly, but it doesn't actually seem to give much benefit. In fact, quite the opposite. So over here on the frame rate, we can see right now we're getting around 120 FPS. Here I've got GPU occlusion calling enabled, and if it's enabled, it's got about 110. And if I disable it, it goes all the way back up to almost 200. And if I move the camera into a place where there's quite a bit of occlusion, and now we test, it's not like this. With it disabled, we've got 190 FPS, and enable it, and again, same thing, also goes down 120 FPS. Now, in the sets themselves, they do show that we have quite a lot of things being combed. So, for example, with it disabled, we can see over there, we're rendering 8 million triangles. That's quite a large amount, whereas if I enable it, that one goes down to just 1 million. However, the batches over there, if it's disabled, the batches are 4400, and if I enable it, it goes up to 5900. So it looks like the setting is going to be very much dependent on what exactly your game is rendering, what your scene has. It seems that the results will vary on a case-by-case -case basis. So maybe in our game, you get quite a bit of a frame rate boost, or maybe not. So test it out with your actual game in order to see if this feature benefits. And the second thing, Unity actually already has occlusion calling. They've got a separate system that they've had for a very long time. So over here, if we go into window and then down here into rendering and open up the occlusion calling window. See so if there it is, this one right here. This one is a separate system. And from what I can tell, we can actually combine both. So you can have this occlusion calling, and I believe this one's actually based on CPU, combined with the other one based on GPU. We can combine both those and maybe those get some really great results. For this one to work, you just need to select your objects and then on the inspector over here on the top right corner, either make it fully static or just enable static for occluder static and occlude e static. So make sure both those are enabled for whatever visual static meshes you have in your scene. And then over here on this window, just go ahead and click on bake. And yep, now we can see it is actually baking. So we've got all kinds of voxels going through the entire grid, the entire scene in order to figure out what things are actually renderable. Okay, everything is baked. And here we can actually verify that this one is baking. We can just take the main camera and we move around and if we can see the things that are rendered or not rendered, again, all based on occlusion. So now here on the stats window, we can see some difference. So we can see over there the batches, 5,900. And if we move the camera and push it all the way down there, all of a sudden the batches goes down to just 1,000. By the way, this type of occlusion calling, this one is enabled over here on the camera. We've got this little checkbox. If we disable this, yep, no occlusion calling and we enable and we have occlusion calling. And again, this whole thing combines with the other one. So these can work independently of one another. So try out the GPU occlusion calling to see if it helps, enable or disable it, and then try out the normal occlusion calling to see if that one also helps or doesn't help. The next Unity 6 feature is Spatial Temporal post processing. This one is basically an upscaler, so it lets you render the game at a small resolution and then upscales it without hopefully any noticeable quality difference. The results are actually pretty impressive. This one is also super easy to set up. We just need to go once again over here onto the render pipeline asset. And on this one over here under quality, we have the upscaling filter. And we just swap this one into spatial temporal post processing. Now in doing so, this is actually going to do two things. First of all, it is going to auto enable TAA. So if we go on the main camera over here on the anti aliasing, it is going to automatically enable this one. That's because this algorithm requires this in order to work. So it's going to enable this one. And secondly, when we enable this one, we need to disable MSAA. So on the render pipeline asset over here for this one, we need to mark it as disabled. And yep, that's it. Just like this, it's already working. Over here, we have the render scale and we can play around with it. So like this, the game looks like this and it's rendering at the same normal resolution. And now if I lower this and as I lower it by quite a bit, you can see how right now I'm at just 63% of the actual resolution, but everything still looks pretty much the same. We can bring it all the way down to like 30% and everything still looks pretty nice. At this point, it's already having a little bit of an artifact, but still we are rendering 30% and it looks quite nice. And you can go all the way down. And now this is obviously way too much, but we can still see the upscaler in action. But if you go into something like 0.3, we are basically just rendering just 30% of the actual frame and visually it actually looks quite nice. We can see the big difference that this upscaler makes if over here we swap it. So instead of using SCP, let's swap it to just bilinear. And if there you go, this is what rendering just 30% of the resolution looks like, very blurry. Whereas if we enable that one, if there you go, it looks almost normal. If we put it on one, almost looks exactly the same as native resolution. Except of course, we are rendering much less, so everything renders quite a bit faster. This one also has a visualizer we can see. So on the rendering debugger, we can go over here on the rendering tab and on the map overlays, we can choose STP. And yep, now over here, we can actually see two images. So over here on the corner, we are seeing what the game is actually rendering. So right now it is rendering the whole thing. And if we scale this down, 
we can see, yep, that one is rendering a smaller and smaller resolution. But over here on the background, thanks to the upscaler, everything still looks pretty nice. We can cut this down to like 0.3, and if there you go, it looks quite nice. Now in terms of actual frame rate results, over here on the editor, it doesn't actually seem like it does much. If we put this on 1 or 0.3, it doesn't seem to modify too much. But that's mainly because the editor overhead. If we make a build, we can see the actual results. So let's create a build without STP. So let's put this one on 1, this one as automatic. So we are not using any kind of upscaling. Nope. So just like this, let's make a build. So yep, without any upscaling on a build, it is running on about 210, 220 FPS. And now let's enable the upscaler. So enable STP and let's put it on, let's say, 0.3. Let's see. Make another build. And if now it's running at about 240, 250 FPS. So yep, that's another nice boost by just enabling a single option. And of course, the more your game is actually GPU limited, the more this will actually help. In our case, since just by using GPU as in the drawer, everything is already insanely fast, because that we just see a tiny boost. But if it wasn't like that, we would get a massive boost. So yep, these are some generally awesome Unity 6 features. And of course, the one that everyone requested. There's a bunch more interesting things in Unity 6. On multiplayer, there's the multiplayer center and multiplayer widgets. These help you get started very quickly. There's also the multiplayer play mode that helps you test multiple Unity builds and test them directly in the editor without having to make proper builds. There's also distributed authority. This is a really interesting one for having different clients have authority over different objects in the world. On platform, there's a bunch of stuff on Unity web, a bunch more performance improvements, then build profiles, adaptive pro volumes, and a tons more stuff. I might do some videos on these after I do a bunch of research. Also, Black Friday and Cyber Monday sales are still active. They're ending really soon. The Unity Asset Store has their Cyber Week sale. So they added 150 new assets to the Black Friday sale. I covered my recommended highlights in a previous video. My own asset is still 50% off. Then for low poly assets, the Synthi store is also still having their sale. This one ends in less than one day. And there are three humble bundles. All of them as usual, super deep discounts. This one over here is 99% off. And two of these are ending in just one day. And for learning how to market your game, check out these courses to learn how to get more wishlists and more sales. These sales are ending really soon, so if you want something, definitely go ahead and get it quickly. All right, so now you know these really awesome features that are super easy to enable and can give you some great benefits. So go ahead and enable them and make some gorgeous games. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.